So traders in Africa immediately noticed the problem with these men. So what did they do? They gave them a bunch of oranges. A week later, the men that were still living healed miraculously. Of course, da Gama never um, acknowledged that these heathens would have some sort of cure for them. He instead had his men pray with their mouths full of their own urine, which I'm sure many of you did this morning, <laughs> uh, if, if you're anything like me. So of the 160 sailors that set out on this voyage, 100 would die of scurvy. Meanwhile, in the West, Jacques Cartier, a 16th century French explorer, was leading an expedition to the eastern Canadian areas when his ship got stuck in a frozen inlet. Soon, the food started rotting. Things got really bad really quickly. Cartier wrote, the unknown sickness began to spread itself amongst us after the strangest sought that ever was heard or seen, insomuch as some did lose all their strength and could not stand on their feet. Then did their legs swell, their sinews shrink as black as any coal. With such infection did the sickness spread itself into our three ships that about the middle of February, of 110 persons that were, there were not 10 whole. So it wasn't the cold air uh, that was killing off Cartier's men, of course. It was their really crappy, rotten diet. Around the 16th century, almost all sailors, didn't matter if you were from Britain or Portugal or France or whatever, uh, they were basically eating the same thing. And this was their weekly ration. Four pounds of salted beef, seven pounds of biscuits, two pounds of salted pork, a half pound of salted fish, a chunk of butter, a chunk of cheese, and check this out, one gallon of beer every day. That's a 12-pack of beer every day. And with that beer, they uh, ate their salted meat, and they um, included that with exactly zero fruits and vegetables. So it was a diet that was just built for scurvy. And as Michael showed, I mean, you saw those last five food groups um, that have zero vitamin C. That's what they were eating. So meanwhile, in the South Pacific, Polynesian sailors were spending weeks and weeks at sea and going tremendous distances, but there were no written instances of scurvy. Why is that? Because their diet consisted of fruits, vegetables, tubers, fish, and instead of beer, what did they have to drink? Coconut water. So just a couple of coconuts is plenty of vitamin C to keep scurvy at bay and to heal you if you have problems. But Cartier didn't know about that. Back in the... Uh, in the doldrums of Canada here. Um, he was desperate to find a cure for his men, so he talked to the Iroquois Indians who told him to use the branches of the Aneda tree and to boil them. So Cartier did that. He boiled them, gave this tea to all of his men, and who would have guessed, a week later, the men who were still alive were totally healed. So um, Cartier, of course, never acknowledged that either. Um, he just, uh, this is the... <laughs> These guys were pretty uh, stubborn. By the mid-1700s, there were several dozen cures for scurvy uh, that had been documented over the past 3,000 years, um, but British, American, and Portuguese doctors either never got wind of them, which seems improbable, or more likely, they refused to prescribe them because they were considered barbaric, unscientific, or even worse, French. 